verse number eight. And the Lord, he is this that goes over before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. You may have your seat. Our subject is God will not fail thee or forsake thee. Amen. God, not the Lord's. Not Pastor Chapman, not Sister Shamika, not Sister Shonda, not Sister Shirley, not Mike and Shower, not Brother Ivy, and so many others. God will not fail you Amen. or forsake you. Yes. Amen. And when we look at failure, we look at being a lack of success. God will not uh, make your journey unsuccessful because that's not God. He's telling you, I'm not going to fail you. I don't care what you're going through. I am going to be with you. And then he says, I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to abandon you. I don't care how ugly it is, how difficult it is, how hard it is, or what you got to go through. I am going to be with you all the way. Amen. You can count on God. Amen. You can count on him if that's you believe him. Amen. Amen. Because we're going to be faced with some situations. Amen. Some trials, some yes. tribulations, yes. and God is going to be with us. Amen. He tells us this morning, I'm not going to forsake you. You're mine. You've been brought with the price. I will not fail you nor forsake you. God in the text is getting ready to do some moving. Shonda's been talking about moving. Pastor's been talking about moving. In other words, God is coming and tells us that God is getting ready to do some moving for the children of Israel. Do you know who the children of Israel are? The children of Israel is God's chosen people. And he is getting ready to do some moving. Are you ready to move? Yes. Are you ready to move? Yes. And he is preparing them for the move. And he's letting them know the old way of doing things might not look like the new path I have you on. But it's okay. Because I'm getting ready to move in the midst of my people. And he's letting us know that the purpose and the mission and the commandments of the Lord will be fulfilled because he's getting ready to move. Are you ready for the move? Yes. Amen. Move means change. Literally, when I move, I go from one position to another. Amen. Are you ready to leave that position you're in and go to another? I might not know the journey. I might not know how it looks. I might not even understand. Yes. But I'm moving because the Spirit of God is moving within me. Amen. And the Bible opens up and it says that Moses, the leader of the children of Israel, he comes before an assembly of over thousands. And he stands up before them and he speaks and he says, basically, thus says the Lord. I'm speaking to the children of Israel. I am 120 years old. It's a marker. God had been with him 120 years. God knew him when he was a baby born. And, and there was a decree in the land to kill all the Egyptian children. But God preserved him and protect, protected him from the hands of the enemy. God didn't allow the enemy to destroy him, even when he was a baby. Now he's 120 now. Way back then, when the enemy meant evil, God worked it out for his good. Amen? Let's give God some praise. You are the enemy of today. The enemy tried to cut you off so long ago. If you do, the, the traps he had set for you. Yes. If you knew the things he had in store for you way back then. Yes. Some of us, even in our mother's womb, he had plans to annihilate you. But God, but God, but God. say that, but God. but God. I remember being in, uh, getting ready to birth my second child, which is the Marcus. And they told me, he's not going to make it because you're getting ready to have a premature birth. And I prayed all night long. And I said, Lord, I don't understand. Why would you let me carry this baby seven months and him die? I, I began to talk to God. All, I just been pleading for God all night. Why? Lord, how? And the Lord let me know I wasn't going to, uh, he wasn't going to die. He was going to live. But even in life, when he came forth, that's because I know some children are anointed. They might not be living in it. <laughs> they might not be where they need to be. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> but they are anointed because God had chosen them from birth. Yes. And But I looked and I said, Lord, and God's spirit is like, and the Lord let him come forth. And then he 
uh, the enemy plagued him with a, 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 a disease. I'm going to talk about all his personal business. I'm going to get off that real quick. Because he's always sensitive and he's not sensitive. But God spared him and brought him through all of that. They came back again and told me he's not going to live to be 13 years old. And I, for 13 years, I went before God in prayer. Lord, oh my God. They tell me, every time I come, they tell me he's not going to make it. He's going, his body's going to shut down. But guess what? God allowed him to live. He's 48 years old today. 48 years old. So when the enemy come at you and tell you and try to cut you off, yes. know God is with you. Man. He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to fail you. He's with you every step of the way. You may not be what you need to be, Amen. but God has a plan for your life. God operates. 
And then he tells us in verse number five, he says, these are the things that I commanded. I commanded that you're going to be the victor. You're going to have the victor. You're going to be the victor. You're going to have the victory. You're going to be on top. You're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be the leader and not the board. God is telling us if we trust him and believe him and do what he's asked us to do, he's going to take care of us. And then he says in verse 6, be strong. God doesn't want any weak saints. Be strong. Be strong. And when we're babies and we're trying to strengthen our children, what do we give them? We give them milk. We give them all the essential food uh, products that they need to strengthen their body. In order for us to be strong, we have to get in the Word of God. We have to study it. We have to, when we're going through trials and tribulations, we have to go into the Word of God and see what God says. God, did you say that this should overcome me? No, He didn't say it should overcome you. So what, what am I doing? I need to get in the Word. I need to be praying. I need to be seeking God. Now, when God tells you some things we're going to go through is the will of God. He's going to tell you you're going to go through it, but I'm going to be with you. It ain't going to be as bad as it could be. But you're going to go through these things. But I'm with you. Seek God concerning your life. Seek him concerning the will for your life. He said, be strong and have a good courage. Encourage yourself. Be courageous. And don't be fearful. Don't be afraid when the report comes back and it's not what you want to hear. I remember when I went to the doctor seven years ago. And they came back with a medical report. They basically told me all the bones in my body was going to collapse. They were, they were going to give out. And the first thing that gave out was my hip. And I got a little fretful because I thought, Lord, this is awful pain. And I got to go through all this stuff. But you know what? I began to seek God. And I began to pray. I began to live and stand on the word of God. And, you know, they, they talk. Oh, well, don't you go do the other surgery? I don't believe in God. I'm going to believe him until he says no. Amen. I'm believing him until he says uh, no. I'm not going to do it. I'm believing God until he says no. I don't care what their report says. Amen. I'm trusting God. I'm, I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor. I'm not saying that. But you've got to believe what, whatever report they give you, you got to believe God. Amen. you got to trust God. you got to seek God. Because God can turn that report around. Amen. 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 So he's telling us to be strong, be in good courage, be not afraid, nor be, uh, later on tells us don't be dismayed. Because he tells us that he's going to be with us. He's not going to fail us nor forsake us. He's going to be with us. And so Moses calls Joshua and tells him, now it's your responsibility to lead the children of Israel to where they need to go. And the Bible lets us know in order to do what God has for us to do, it's not going to come by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're going to need the Spirit of the Lord to go on this journey. It's just not enough coming in the building. It's not enough listening to the Bible study. We're going to have, God, have to have God inside of us to take us through the battles and through the things that we will face. But we will come out with a victory. Amen. Because he's told us so. And then the word of God says in verse 8, and the Lord, he is, he it is that doeth, doth go up before thee. I remember the last one. But it's the Lord that, go, that will go with you and go before you. Just as uh, God sent the pillar of fire and the cloud that led the children of Israel out of the wilderness, God will be with us and he will lead us. And he will guide us. And he will direct us in all paths of righteousness. And then the word of God says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord. You've got to trust him. When he gives you an answer and he gives you a decision, you have to trust God for what he said. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. It might not sound like what you want it to sound. But trust him. Trust what he said that he's going to do. Trust the Lord with all thy heart and lay not to thy own understanding. And in all thy ways. You know, people say, well, I ain't got to talk to God, but y'all do. In all 
all our ways, acknowledge him. If you acknowledge him, he's going to direct your path. If you don't acknowledge him, when the enemy comes, you ain't going to know which way to go. If you don't like trust him and acknowledge him, how, how will you know which direction to take? There's so many directions out here today. So many false errors. So many things that seem like it's God, but it's not God. So many myths, so many lies. I heard the other day, uh, uh, one of our prominent politicians said, and one of the church people said, that if you're a Democrat, you're going to hell. And I thought, what? I heard them say, if you're a Republican, you're going to hell. God is not a religion. God is not a religion. God is not a society. God is not a culture. God is not a race. God is none of those things. God is a spirit. And those that worship him will worship him in spirit and truth. You better know God for yourself. You better know God for yourself. Because if you listen to people and listen to men and listen to a lot of this negative social media, you'll be on the wrong path. You'll be following things that is against the will of God for your life. If you want God to continue to strengthen you and protect you and know that God is not going to fail you and he's not going to forsake you, get in the word. Get in the word of God. Be faithful to your uh, belief in him. I don't care who don't believe. It's going to come a time it doesn't matter what they believe. Joshua said, this man that God is calling to lead the children of Israel, he says, for me and my house. I can't worry about Shemekah's house like Noah. But me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you have to make that decision for yourself. Me and everything associated with me, we're going to serve the Lord. And we're going to serve him in righteousness. We're going to serve him in truth. We're going to serve him with a good heart and a good spirit. Because he's going to lead us in the path we need to go. God is not going to fail you. God is not going to fail you. We may make mistakes, but God is not going to fail us. He loves us and he wants to protect us.